American Manufacturing is known for producing the simplest to use and highest quality control panels for the water and wastewater industry. Today we are going to review the setup and programming of the DP1 drip control for the operation of Percrite drip dispersal systems. The DP1 series control panel comes in a NEMA 4X rated enclosure with a hinged inner door, adjustable pump run timer, separate high level float circuit, handoff auto toggle switches and indicator lights for all operations. The control panel is UL listed. Some of the standard features of the DP1 series include the ability to operate simplex or duplex pumps from one to four zones with independently adjustable zone dose time and auto field flushing. The ability to auto field flush one or two disc filters Typically, this is done at the start of every dose cycle and every five minutes during dosing. All setup of the DP1 series is done in the PLC with a four button programmer. This is the four button TD200 programmer, which we'll get into more detail here in a few minutes. The DP1 series also provides data collection through the utilization of elapsed time meters and cycle counters for the zones and pumps and field flush and high level counters. On the inner door of the American Percrite DP1 series you'll find a series of handoff auto switches, indicator lights, and fuses. These are the main operator interface. The lights operate both in hand and in automatic for each of the solenoids. Inside the control panel you'll find a processor with its indicator lights, motor contactor, circuit breakers, and the main backplate circuit card. This card holds the fuses, transformer relays, and the connection to the hydraulic unit. Some of the basic tools you'll need for working on and setting up the DP1 series include a voltmeter, a regular screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, needle nose pliers, and a very small screwdriver for adjusting the pump run time and attaching the hydraulic unit. Some of the devices that attach to the control panel include the pump, which is used for dosing the fields, the float switches to indicate water level, we have the off level float, the dose enable, peak enable, and the high water alarm. Under normal operation, the dose enable and off float are both up, and the system is designed to get rid of approximately 60% of the flow. If the water level continues to rise, hitting the peak float, we'll go ahead and automatically decrease the rest period, taking the system up to 100% of the design capacity. If the water level continues to rise, we'll hit the high water alarm, and we'll go ahead and turn on that red light and buzzer. We also have the hydraulic unit or the filtration unit which attaches to the control panel. This provides for disc filtration, flow metering. We have our zone valves which control the flow out to the fields, a field flush valve used for flushing the system, and our disc filter flush valves. Each of these valves are equipped with a 24 volt solenoid, either normally closed or normally open, and those attach back to the control panel through a low voltage cable. The Percrite process is controlled by inputs to and outputs from the PLC. These inputs can be toggle switches from the inner door. When the toggle switches are in the automatic position, the corresponding light will illuminate on the PLC. When the toggle switches are placed in the hand position, the indicator light on the inner door illuminates. The other input into the PLC are from the float switches located inside of the pump chamber. As each float raises with the water level, the corresponding input illuminates on the PLC. These float switches include from the bottom to top, redundant off, timer enable, peak enable, and high level. Just to go over these inputs and outputs in a little more detail, the inputs to the system are located on the bottom of the processor. The outputs are the lights on the top of the processor. Whenever you call American for technical support, which is always free by the way, the first thing we'll ask is what inputs and what outputs do you have? 
There's a chart attached to the inside of the inner door, which tells you exactly which lights attach to which appliance. So if light number one is on, we know that the off level float is up. If light zero is on on the output, we know that the pump is being called toward a run. To access the information contained inside of the processor or to change settings, that's when we'll use the TD200 handheld. There is a data monitoring table available on American's website, AmericanOnSite.com. With this monitoring table, you can tell exactly what you're going to see behind each one of the screens. Connecting the handheld programmer is done by using the COM port on the bottom left-hand side of the processor. The handheld is powered off of the control supply, so there's no need for batteries. Once connected, you'll have access to four screens, the main screen, the data, the view status, and the edit screen. You'll also be using two buttons to scroll up and down to change your pump rest time. The first screen we're going to talk about is F2, which gives you access to all of your data logs and cycle counters. Simply press the F2 button. You'll see zone counters and zone ETMs for each one of the zones. You'll see the same counters and elapsed time meters for the pumps, for peak, and for high level. The last counter records the number of field flushes per zone. The F3 screen allows you to view the current status of the system. You can use this screen to watch uh, timers and counters increment as the system is running. When you press the F3 key, the first screen that you'll see is the zone dose timer. We have the target pump run time and the elapsed amount of time. So when the system is running, we'll be able to watch the elapsed time increase. The zone rest timer shows the amount of time set for a rest and the amount of time that has elapsed since the previous dose. Our last two screens include the field flush counter, which counts the number of flushes in this cycle, and displays the next zone to dose. The edit screen is used to change the percentages of pump runtime for adjusting independent runtimes on different zones. Your standard and peak rests for either a single or two zone system and how many times you want to allow the system to dose in peak mode. You can also change the field flush frequency to flush the fields more often. The pump run time is displayed under the edit screen. It's displayed independently for each zone and adjusted using a small screwdriver on the PLC. You can adjust the pump run set screw either up or down You'll notice the numbers are changing on the uh, edit screen. They change the same for both zones. Pump run times can be adjusted without using a handheld. They can be done with little trial and error with a small screwdriver on the PLC. Using this method, pump run times are limited to two and a half to 19 and a half minutes. Independent zone run times can only be adjusted using the handheld. Going to the F4 screen, we'll press enter until the cursor is flashing under the correct zone and percentage. Using the up and down arrows, you can now independently adjust the percentage of the pump run time dial for each field. In this case, zone 1 is now set to 75%, zone 2 is 100%. I'll go ahead and adjust that back up to 100%. Adjusting the rest times is also done using the F4 edit button. Once you've hit F4, use your down arrows to scroll down to the number of zones that you have in your system. In our case, we're playing with a two zone. Once the cursor is flashing on the correct line, press enter to move to the adjustable time. Using your down or up arrow key, adjust the rest time to your desired value. You can also press enter to move down to the peak rest time. These are independently adjustable. The same, same thing, go ahead and adjust your peak rest. 
hit enter, which will take you back to the beginning of that F4 screen. You can come back to your zones to confirm that the data is uh, now reset.